I have six random encounters over here. You guys roll the dice, and I'm going to pull up just nothing but a hook. From that hook, we're going to figure out, put a little meat on it. Uh, what's the real story behind the hook? What kind of encounter could we build off of that storyline in that hook? And how would it all come to pass? And when we're done with it, we will write it all up and make it available on our coffee. coffee. Mm -hmm. All right. You ready for me to roll? Roll that beautiful D6. I got a three. A three. A three. Okay. Spot number three. That was overly dramatic. It was really dramatic. I feel like it should have had like a, a drum roll, but I don't have that kind of drum roll, so I'm going to well, give you... We can do a second cut on this if you want. Hold on. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here is our hook. We absolutely welcome anybody in chat to help us brainstorm this encounter culture. Here's the hook. There's an abandoned wagon in the road. Evidence of a battle and one and only one small set of footprints leading off into the wilderness. Hmm. What's really going on here? What's the story? Do we need to set a little more of the scene? Like, first of all, let me ask you this. Are there bodies? You said there's evidence of a battle, but does it just like look like somebody fought here or like we see dead bodies? I would say see dead bodies. Okay. I can tell you where my head went like immediately, but it's really, it's really far-fetched. So to me, this only works if your party has like a halfling. Uh, and basically your party wakes up and they start walking and they come across this cart that's had this big fight. And after a few minutes, they realize it's their own bodies and they're having like an out of body experience. And like one of their party members is in on it is a halfling who fled. And so the part, the halfling's having like a secondary story while you're either happy your party's playing. But like I said, that's really far fetched. Oh, that, that's really good. Emily. we're not going with that at all. Yeah. John, what have you got? Do halflings have small feet? I don't know. This is where my, I told you this is where my brain went. Okay. So PV in chat says footprints, little kid. I That's where my mind went with it too. But thinking of why the little kid was there or walking away, that's where the story needs to be. Right. Is this body, whether it's a little kid or something else that has little feet. Is that the sole survivor of the wagon and got attacked? Or maybe the owner of the little feet did the attacking or got what it wanted and yeah. left off? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe it is a prodigy barbarian who went into a fit of rage and his little 12 year old body just like massacred the entire traveling party. That's cool. That's cool. But it's an very adolescent, anime. an adolescent barbarian who hasn't let, yet learned to control his rage just went Am. crazy on this place. I was also thinking, what if it's like a family that was traveling and there's like a little kid in the back of the wagon playing with like little miniature toys? Uh, but they're enchanted, and so as, like, he's like, oh, this is our wagon, and the bad guys come up, and Dad jumps out, and he's in the back of the wagon, like, playing out this horrible scene when outside is actually happening, and he mm -hmm. comes out to find, like, the remains like of it, one. and then he, like, runs in fear with his toys in, in tow. And yeah. then the party yeah. has to figure out what happened here, and then find him and try to figure out what's going on with the toys before something else happens. That's not bad. I had a similar thought, and I'm not offering this as an option because it kind of is very similar, which is why I said it was a right. similar thought. Um, I was thinking, like, you remember those old movies like Firestarter or whatever where mm -hmm. a kid doesn't realize yet that they have some power, um, and so they're doing things, and they're you know, setting the curtains on fire because they got mad in the house. Right. right. Um, so it's similar line. Yours was, though, the toy set. Was magical? 
Yeah. Or it, did the kid have power? I in my head the toy set is magical. I'm, I'm taking it. Did the, but the kid could have had kid. power that made the toy set yeah. magical. Depending on where you want to go. And that's why it sparked it. It was just some I don't know, some other moment that caused the kid to develop its powers in some way and was able to through the use of the toys create all this carnage. All right, so uh, I think uh, I think we got a winner here. We're gonna go with a kid in the back of the cart playing with a toy set, pretending it was them. And as things were happening in the kid's imagination, playing it out, it was actually happening to the people mm -hmm. around them. All right. So all the bodies on the road here are the people this this first impression would be wow <clears throat> these poor travelers in their wagon got attacked right but there was no uh, no outside force that came in and attacked them it was all so all the bodies laying around are bodies like the child's mother father but you did say when you were describing it i think you said bandits right Oh, yeah, any whatever his toys are, you know, it could be. What if the first clue was that it was like soldiers from a kingdom that's like a month's travel away that you would never see here, right? That perpetrated it. Uh, so the attackers are um, Out anachronistic of mm -hmm. to this thing. Anachronistic, definitely. Because I was thinking, like, when you find the kid, like, you have I was to... thinking geographically far, but anachronistic is actually better. Anachronistic would stick out right there as, hey, these can't be here. Whereas geographically far... Hey, it could be here, but it's not likely yeah. to absolutely impossible. But, I mean, we're playing in fantasy realm with gates between planes. So, you know, I guess yeah. technically possible, there's a possibility but... anywhere, but I like it. The attackers should not be here, and their bodies were laying on the ground. Because apparently, the kid played it out to a complete probably decimation. the kid imagined him or herself as the hero in the situation. I'm explaining why they're the only survivor. Yeah. Here we go. Do both a kingdom from. A long time ago and far away far away cool so so the kid then so this is all what's really going on behind this hook um at some point the kid must have stopped playing and realized oh crap yeah everybody's dead Runs and for the hill. whether he, he or she stuck around there for a little while waiting for her help to come and it was too long and then finally decided they better do something or shame realizing oh, that they trouble. had done this head off into to the wilderness yeah i think that depends on the age of the kid like yeah i think any kid though would be terrified of getting in trouble because they just created all this you know death and destruction around them probably so at your parties. And this kid, just like we don't, probably doesn't at this point know whether it was this toy set. Or him. Or him. Which is cool, so. Right, so they're out there in the wilderness. One trying to survive as a young kid. Give me an age. Well, what are we talking about here? Is this an 8-year-old kid? 12-year-old kid? I would say 10 to 11. To have small footprints be... And still be playing with toys, but old enough to be having kind of the... Battle scenes. Battle types. scenes play through. So, 10 to 12. I don't know, man. My Ninja Turtles had some throwdowns back in the day when I was like five. Man, we were playing some seriously deadly cops and robbers when I was six, so... <laughs> um, I played with horses, so I can't relate. I think 10 or 12 is okay. Otherwise, it gets to a point where you can't really flesh out the character of the kid too much. 
because sure. like five year olds are pretty Boring. samey. <laughs> I like it being young enough that there's a helplessness factor with the kid out in the wilderness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How big are your feet? <laughs> Dainy feet. Uh, I like the helplessness factor, um, but I also like there to be a certain level of intelligence to the child that so that it knows it something effed up just happened. Plus, here. you know, so there was the hook, and and now we've kind of come up with the what's really going on, the story behind the hook. So now we get to the encounter part. Uh, I'll toss this out there, and then we'll take whatever brainstorms. Um, assuming your characters decide to follow the footprints. That I, I'm, pro I'm projecting that this child is a ways off, alone, scared, and is currently being attacked by other things, whether it's wolves or bandits or whatever. But in the time since the, they left the wagon till they got here, they've been piecing some stuff together. And so with what few pieces of the toy set they're able to bring with them, they're kind of like battling off real world enemies right. by moving their toys around and trying to, and they're just barely holding on, you know. Right. And you got to jump in. I was thinking that something similar, but I was also thinking like they're held up in a cave. And as you approach the cave, like very strange depictions of child toys, like a rag doll that's like the size of like a forest giant comes lumbering to you. And he's like set up these defense lines that you have to get through to get to him. You know, there's like dogs, packs of dogs. That... Oh, so <laughs> no, I'm, I'm digging that because then I would go lower. I'd go like eight year old. Went and found this cave and is sitting in there lonely and nothing to do and just starts playing again. No real danger to him. But as the party is going there to try and rescue the kid, freaking uh, raggedy dire Andy. raggedy Ann comes <laughs> over there. <laughs> and it's like a forest troll that just comes lumbering. Right. And, and the good thing about that is, you know, we build these encounter cultures not necessarily aimed at a particular level of character or party, mm -hmm. and which, so we try to add some scalability in there. That adds the everything you need for scalability, right? Um, you know, if, do I need to bring one huge Raggedy Ann or could, you know, two wooden... Uh, wooden horses on rockers, rockers? come <laughs> running, come rocking down the hill, charging in, rocking down the hill. <laughs> so you know you could add more or bigger uh, animated, um, evoked toys. Is that evocation magic? Evocation is calling on deities, isn't it? I have to look enchantment, up enchantment. Maybe. Maybe I would think it would be under either enchantment or evocation. Yeah. But either way. I'll look it up. But that's cool because then the DM who's decided to take this encounter culture and add it to a game they're already running can scale, can scale it. And if it's the party of seventh level folks, you just bigger raggedy ends or more of those things. And you don't have to come up with new creature battle blocks. through just to get in there and find a kid going, you know, huh. and then look up, hi. Hi. <laughs> and you don't have to make new stat Kid, blocks. put... The, As you just like put the toy soldier right, down, dragging the cleric <laughs> behind you. Yeah, but like it, you also don't have to make new stat blocks for monsters. You just take mountain troll, reskin it. You take dire wolf, reskin it, and so you're able to, without having to come up with all new stat blocks, take ones and just say, well, what would this be as a toy? There you go. Oh my god. Uh, what that's about brilliant. what about what about a, a slime that's a jack in the box? <laughs> just. just <laughs> so fucking scary. God, can you imagine you're walking up and <laughs> the ground just opens up and this big freaking clown head comes out on a big swing. No, no I can't. I don't <laughs> takes like a bite at you when it gets close. I don't like clowns. <laughs> Do you want to address the nature of what's making the toys this yeah, way? Yeah, so where did that come from? What happened? I love that. PB suggested up there that a bad guy gave the kid the toys, could have given the kid the toys knowing that it would unlock some of the kid's potential. That's good. So that makes it both the kid and the set 
right. are kind of magical, which I like a lot. Because then when you take the set away from the kid, your party's not getting this like OP piece, you know. They're not getting, they have, they don't have the kid's potential for which to use it. Maybe like he it. just has like some sort of innate magic that the uh, guy was like, I can sense it in him. I know what I'll do. I'll give him these soldiers from millennia ago and a wagon just like his. And maybe the family had something the wizard wanted. What if, what if you maybe go the like wizard the wizard was naked? Maybe. <laughs> what if you go the trauma route where it's like a really lonely kid, like parents are always working or always traveling. He's always stuck in the back of this wagon and some patron God was like made like a kid's pact with him. Like, I'll give you these toys. You know, and they're almost like the God of Chaos, like that metal. That is so freaking dark. Yeah, and it they're is. like, it doesn't even have to be like, mal, you know, malevolent. It can be, it can be very benign. It can be very. I just hate seeing kids being lonely. So they gave them this toy set, thinking, you know, they'll have a nice game. But they didn't realize that in the mortal realm, how that would manifest. The kids clueless, and the and the patron was like, oh, oh shit, that shit. didn't work out. Or the God that the, the patron deity that we made, Metal, who's the God of Chaos. Maybe it's like a playful god. Yeah. Who it's not a Trickery trauma related guy or thing. Playful. In my head it was more playful. It was like the fact that the they, they saw the kid was suffering and they're like, I want to help. And they weren't trying to do something bad, but when you take god like power and put it on mortal planes, it can manifest poorly. <laughs> sort of like how if there were a four dimensional creature in our three dimensional space it would look like a cross section or a cutaway like it's so far out of our scope realm of perception that we don't perceive it the way we should and like a god may be like hey i'll give him some toys it'll be fun and not perceive that It'll be fun for him for a minute, but it'll also kill his family. I love all of these ideas. One idea I also have is that kid was just bored in the back of the wagon and started digging through shit he wasn't supposed to be digging through and found something and started playing with it. And I think, you know, I think for purposes of writing up this encounter culture, we really only need to state that these things, the toy set is magic and the kid has some magical inherent ability and it makes sure the two right. has made this happen. And then I can can kind of throw in there, hey, here's a couple things that you could use, right? right? You know, somebody gave him a set to bring it out or the kid was lonely and ended up making a pact with a, a warlock patron way early in his life or he was digging around through some shit right. it shouldn't have been. And that way, whoever, you know, any DM that is going to use this for their campaign, they can kind of Play tailor right it a little bit to fit how it fits best in. Because we don't do a lot with deities in our games usually. So, like, for us, that wouldn't be a super big draw. But if it was a magic item or something like, yeah, that's a big draw. But you may play a very deity-heavy game and be like, oh, yeah, I got just the just the one that would do this. And you get to weave it into the story. So, yeah, I like that, that you kind of leave it open-ended. Yeah. The, the toys are magical. <clears throat> the kid has some inherent magic that he hasn't yet discovered. And the combination of those two happen. And <clears throat> here's a list of ways that they, the two of them could have come together. Some bad guy gave it to him, hoping to cause chaos. Hey, some good guy gave it to him, not realizing they were magic and he was doing that. Found it in the back of his thing. Or I really like the, if I was going to run it, I think I would go with your, this kid spent so many lonely hours alone in his own room, um, talking to himself, trying, you know, no siblings right. or whatever. And then this patron kind of like, since that there's some magic in the kid, Wanted like, to help okay. him out. Sorry to That's see how I would And it backfired on the patron. Like, you know, shit. not that the patron was trying to create this havoc, but it just happened. Yeah. That sounds That's how I would me. play it. I think a cool <clears throat> reward for getting the scenario done without causing like catastrophe to the kid. What if he had like toy horses that the party could take with them and use that were tireless, that never had to rest or eat That's or brilliant. You it's know, they like have the, the taking mastiff. the folding boat concept. Yeah. I like well, there's that. a there's a totem of a mastiff in one of the games that I've watched before where 
you like toss this thing and it brings out a full size fighting mastiff. So it's that, but basically it's they're pony horses. They're it's nothing game breaking. It's a quality of life, quality of thing, life, but... fun thing. But if I, if as a player, you gave me a little pocket pony that I could toss out and actually ride on a never tiring horse, that would be epic. Because then you never have to be like, where's a stable? <laughs> we need to rent a horse. Um, you may have just named this encounter. Pocket ponies. Pocket ponies. I love it. It's like Polly Pocket and My Little Pony all jammed together. Pocket. Okay, pony. so we've got the hook. Abandoned, tr abandoned, abandoned wagon, everybody else is dead. There's one small foot of, set of footprints leading away. If your party decides to investigate, they can. The story behind it all was just a single family group traveling down the road, child in the back, playing with a set of toys. Toys are magical. The child has previously undiscovered magic within him. The combination of the two, as he imagines this play fight going on it happens around and wipes out everybody in there except him right. comes to the realization that is what has happened um and either from fear or shame or whatever he treks off into the wilderness he's held up in a cave somewhere the party goes after looking for him he's in there lonely again maybe even talking to a patron <laughs> but playing with his toys again as the party comes up and the party ends up having to fight his animated toys his animated toys to get in there and save the child and i love the the reward you know so uh, the conclusion of it is the kid is saved but for where we don't have a family to put him back to so so what happens with the kid I, I love the idea of the reward being, you know, you get those wooden horses that you can stick in your pocket and anytime you need a ride, boom, you got it. Um, and I've got that written down. It will definitely go in there. But as a conclusion goes, we kind of kind of wrap it up with the kid, don't we? We take him to the next town. I, I think, think that's going to vary gonna be, depending yeah. on group. Because if they go the patron route, then it's, you know, patron can contact you at the end and be like, I'll find him. I'll, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to put him with a human family, leave him to grow and come back when he's older and can make better choices. If you go the magic item route, then you just got to take him into town and find the patron could just, you know, once the party gets in there and, and saves the kid and gets their horses, the patron could just, you know, open up a little dimension portal, step through. Yeah. He's coming with me. <laughs> step back through. Close. Which would be epic. <laughs> to cheese land. Oh my God. Cheese land. Where he can play forever. That's terrifying. Cool. So, yeah, there's several different ways. And when I've written the other ones up, it's like, here are way, you know, the party could, you know, go back and kick the the naked wizard's butt. Or <laughs> they could keep the magic item for themselves. So so here they could. Here's my, my only fear, if I was a DM, is that the party's choice is to make Raise the kid the a kid. little mascot. It's a mm -hmm. enduring PC that they would tag, they bring along with them. And then I would spend the rest of my time as the DM trying to figure out how I can separate that. Yeah. And then you guys yeah. spend way too much time thinking about how to kill a kid. <laughs> it would only take one time of his toys joining with the bad guys before the party would be like, look, you got to go. Huh? Got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just find a good way to resolve that. Yeah. I like that one. That was good. That was one of my favorite. I think I say that every week just because I enjoy doing the brainstorming with I you did. guys. And PV, great ideas from chat. Thanks for helping us out. You'll get the uh, co writer credit on these things and, and and a percentage of the proceeds of these things that we give away for free. We so. will give you 20% of free. 20% of free. And you could win $1 you billion. Could dollars. Win. <laughs> but no, thanks. Great ideas from you there, PV. Um, 